Hey everyone, I was planning on making another video in our Luke series tonight, but I wanted to do kind of a side study, something that, that definitely ties in and speaks, well, it has to do with one of the key features of Jesus' ministry. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> My wife and I intentionally don't have a television in our house, but somehow the news, all the political stuff seems to, to find us anyway. And I imagine that you might be in the same boat, especially I think during this pandemic, a lot more of us have been pulled into a lot of this political stuff in the political world just because of the, uh, you know, the current health crisis and the laws surrounding that and how they're all affecting our lives. So we're all more in tune with this and I'm on YouTube and even when I say, you know, don't recommend this channel, it recommends the news story anyway, <laughs> the next time I get on and you, Probably all the news stories that I see are like the ones that you see. They're always uh, controversial. It's always, you know, this senator humiliates this other senator. Or, here's why this guy's evil. Or here's a lie that such and such a representative got caught in. Or somebody's involved in, a, in an affair. And someone's got an ethics probe going on. Or, or people making all, kind of all kinds of accusations against other people. And half the time they're not true. And half the time they... they get proven to be lies but you know what even when people get caught in their lies these politicians at least that you know they don't admit to it it's never their fault there's always a misunderstanding that they're, they're never responsible and sometimes you just wonder if these people are in washington as servants of the people which is their job or if they're really just self-interested worried about their own longevity and their own relevance and they'll say or do whatever it takes in order to get elected again or in order to energize their base just to, to get some votes and um, that goes for both sides i mean both sides are guilty of some of these things i think we, we also see just a moral decline in our in our nation repeating some of the mistakes of of history and then there's always just this perpetual question mark about the direction of the country because you know every every two four years all these people are up for re-election again and sometimes the candidate that you want gets elected and you have a little bit of a piece from the insanity for a couple years. But maybe the next time, you know, your guy loses and the country goes in a direction that, that you don't want it to go. And yeah, I sit back and I'm like, man, is this how it's going to be for the rest of my life? <laughs> is it going to be this contentious? Are people not going to be able to get along? Not going to be able to compromise on anything? Is the country just going to be in this forever state of partisanship and and, and really just like hatred among the people who are supposedly our representatives. As a Christian, I feel like I should stay in tune somewhat because I want to stand up for the right things and support the right things. And you got to be at least in tune with politics somewhat to, to know what those things are. But it's like, there's got to be something better than this. You know, but I don't know that there is anything better than this. Not so long as the world is run by men whose hearts are corrupted by sin. And, you know, mine included. People who are affected by temptations and by uh, the corrupting influences of, of the devil. Men who suffer the effects of pride. I don't know that there is anything better. And I think that ties in with what Jesus was talking about. I think the older I get, the more I appreciate the concept of the kingdom of God. And I want this video to be an invitation to the kingdom of God. Because if you're tired and sick of this, like I am, what we need is a ruler who's always good, who is not self-seeking, but is self-sacrificial who is a servant to the people. What we need is somebody who we can trust is never going to lie to us, is always going to present us with the truth, even when those truths are hard, right? But they're, they're never going to change their message. They're always going to be honest. We need politicians who aren't affected by sin, who always uphold what's good and pure and right. And then our country will learn from the mistakes and the, the empty promises of sin, and they won't go back to those things and it'll be good. It'll be good forever, right? <laughs> we have a bright future, always. We need competent leaders who 
deeply understand the character of men and understand what it's like to be uh, in, in our shoes. And then we need that leader to live forever. Because if we have to find somebody else, we're probably not going to be able to do it, right? And the next leader might not be as good as the, the perfect one that we found. <laughs> and then on this earth, if you're looking for a human leader to, to fill that role, you're never going to find him. Why? Because Romans chapter 3 tells us that all men have sinned. Right? All men are, are subject to the lure of temptation and the devil's lies. But then we see Jesus coming on the scene. And he tells us about another kingdom, another kingdom that we can be added to, that we can place our citizen, citizenship in. And this is a kingdom that is ruled over by him, by God, by the Spirit. And it's not just ruled over for four years or two years or, or even a lifetime. This is a kingdom that he's going to sit, Jesus is going to sit on the throne of forever. And he's going to be the ruler and the king. And he's somebody who uh, has conquered sin and temptation. He's somebody who intimately understands the character of men because he created mankind. He's someone whose word is faithful. He's not going to lie to us or steer us in the wrong direction. He's somebody who's self-sacrificial and that he already proved that. Somebody who, who's worthy and, and shown that he's worthy of, of following. And that's the invitation of God in, in the kingdom of God. We see throughout the Bible these stories of all of these nations, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, the Greeks, the Romans, all these nations that thought they were really something. And God interacted with a lot of the leaders of those nations, and they lifted themselves up in pride, but they also fell into the corruption of sin. And God humbled them and he brought them down. And there's this continual cycle of nations rising up and then falling down into corruption after they oppose God. And I think we're going through the same process, and that process has continued on even as the Bible has kind of closed its pages in, in the first century. And, and you know, now we progress into what we would consider modern history. The cycle still continues. It's still valid. And it will continue forever as long as men are in charge of the institutions of the world. The beauty of the kingdom of God is its stability. And I think as the world gets more unstable, we appreciate the stability of the kingdom of God even more. God's offering us something that's grounded in eternity, especially as we see the world throwing away objective morality, throwing away facts, throwing away scientific facts, saying that oh, you know, people, can, people have their own truth. People can decide on their own truth. Pretty soon what we get, and we're already experiencing it, is what is... <laughs> what is referred to as clown world, right? Nothing's real, nothing's true. Everything's just, you know, your personal opinion. You live by your own truth. Well, guess what? That's, that's not the reality that we live in. Things are gonna fall apart real fast if we live in crazy town. And the kingdom of God offers an objective morality rooted in eternity, rooted in an eternal God, a foundation that people can build their lives on. Uh, family institutions that people can build their lives around, and ultimately a foundation that holds even as we pass through this life and die and move on into eternity. Right? The only king who's capable of conquering death for us is Jesus. He's the only one. That's the only kingdom that's going to last. And in the end, he's going to be the only one left standing. And who are we going to be allied with? You know, are we going to put our affections here with kingdoms that are ruled over by men and subject to corruption and that will bow at the feet of Jesus one day? Or are we going to ally ourselves with him and eventually reign with him? That's the offer of the kingdom of God. And that's the invitation to all of us to be added to that kingdom.